Hey everyone, welcome to my project recap video. This is a review of the finished upcycle product that we had done here previously on the channel. What's so exciting about this is that the wallet on chain design came out far better than I had envisioned it would. I was adamant that it would come out as like a cheap looking item. Oh, so cute. Here's why. So I usually like to convert vintage wallet on chains from a flap silhouette with a front closure, but this has totally altered my past trivial attempts to make this bifold wallet look classy. I did it. Hey, I'm Nina. This is my Elevated Luxury channel, where we go into Artesian escapades with vintage luxury upcycles, in tutorials from the junk and abandoned to an upcycle renewal. I hunt items to rescue on the vintage resale market, aka eBay. There is an infinite, vast assortment to be rescued. Right? An upcycle to high value again on the resale market. This is what I call artesian sport trade. If you need a hobby, this is a great one. Not subjective to my opinion, it spews meditative activity of pastime painting. In the joy of transmuting items, in a literal sense of old to new. The reason that this wallet on chain project was a little more difficult than one would think is because of deciphering the location of the D-ring ribbit for it to actually work and be functional. Just to mention, dyeing the wallet is relatively easy from a beginner skill level. Let's take a look at a couple past attempts of the Cambodian wallet so we can learn how the hardware placement is so important. For one thing, we want it to be completely balanced when worn. So if the placement is not right, the item will have a tilted forward appearance. This is not my idea of functionality. So I'm not sure if you know about Coco Chanel and her time period, but her set limelight time was in the 1920s. She invented the flapper dress and much more in styles for women's comfort. Now on this channel, I'm going to have the same name for these items. It will be specific to this wallet on chain. Going forward as a reference, it'll just be a flapper. Since there is like a non-existent snap closure on the front, I want to recycle the word flappers to a new century format. These will be my little flapper items since we won't be able to really call them bags. But what's key here is that we are pretty much on the dawn of time of no physical cards and tender pay along with cash. This is a neat way to recycle using fair trade fashion with the sustainability approach that these wallets can still be used to hold our phones. What's the point? Well, there are a few. Chanel will always be the top Monday, sitting beside Hermes and Cartier, and a few others, of course. But that doesn't mean we can inquire the want for this particular caliber of designer, or what owning Chanel has to offer. We see celebrities, we hear the music artists drop her name. There is a sense of desire to have like influence in our lives. Not only was she an inspiration to my very own journey, she was quintessential to key movements of last century. So you will always hear me using her as a reference on my other fashion channel. It's called Sansa Moda. Side note, I have not abandoned that channel. This is just my main focus right now. I do want to do more of a fair trade movement that I like to have in this moment in time. I do plan on posting at least once a month on Sansa Moda, but I will certainly pick up come September. So after all that, let's begin our review of this junk wallet transformation that I'm so ecstatic to share with you. I have here the 2005 Cambodian wallet that was originally discolored with heavy wear on the corners and junky appearance. I used Tarago color dye to paint this project. As you can see for yourself, the proof of using premium quality in paint with upcycling. I decided to stick with a Y2K Zykus color palette. You can see this unique shade of gift box blue. Definitely screams millennial and past fashion times. I also wanted to use the same intensity and hue with the matching logo. So I chose the matching shade of orchid pink. I kept the same high gloss feature as from the original design. So I can complement its true form appearance. Now we can see the interior was a 
bit hard to work with in color palette. It's a vibrant shade of orange with the interior pockets on the brink of being neon orange. So what I did was not to alter the appearance completely because the interior was still in pretty good fair shape. Instead, I found the matching color touched up a few spots along the ex exterior pockets here, which you'll be able to see in the video. I wanted to enclose a color story so the original interior wouldn't seem so abstract. The overall upcycled look. With that, I had placed the matching orchid trim from the logo here. So it could make sense when someone's using it and the item is being opened. And I also dyed the matching accordion pleats of the coin pocket in the same orchid color. So this can be visual on both sides when worn, especially when the wallet is closed. On the side, you can grasp a hidden orchid pink here. So now that you understand that the color story can make sense, Lastly, as you can see, I painted the gift box blue on the border trim. Overall, this provides a very complementary color story flow. It reminds me of the fashion term color blocking, which I actually enjoy the aesthetic very much. It's minimal, it's eye-catching, and provides a theme and palette to display. The D-ring rivet was certainly a thought process, like what would be the best placement. I punched holes right at the end here near the border trim placement to have the perfect balance and display when worn. This precise location right here will have the wallet be upright when worn. As you see, it closes completely. So what happens when you don't place the D-rings correctly or if they're not in an ideal location you'll have a wallet that doesn't fold. Or another scenario would be when worn, the item tips forward. And I know that from personal testimony. If you want to know where to place the D-ring rivet, I suggest you watch the video. I do it right on camera for you to see. It's precisely a half inch down from the top seam. You can't tell because it looks like it's closer to the top but it's in half inch down. The hole is actually a half inch down. You just see the outer hardware rivet that takes up much space. I showed you what would happen in those photos if the D-ring rivet is not placed in the right place. And I just discussed like how your item would look. It's not really the end of the world. You can still sell your item. It would just be a bit discounted because Obviously, you have to evidently disclose that and you want to make sure that its precise location is even on both sides. So it's really important as you see why this was a risk because the last few that I attempted did not come out the right way. You can definitely still resell your item. All three of those did sell, um, but now this one is like a perfect representation of what I wanted.